Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome. Michael here, Deeper States of Mind and Wellness. How is everybody? I see people popping into Facebook. I'm sorry, popping into Instagram. Not Instagram? YouTube. Sorry about that, guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. My name is Michael Almarez. In a moment, we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting, an interesting topic that I'm finding happening, not just in our country, but in the world. Um, along with the clients that I've been working with, um, which if, as many of you know, I work with a lot of teams because I work with elite athletes, Olympic, junior Olympic athletes, as well as just helping kids get through everyday coaching programs as far as getting into college, where they're going to go, what they're going to do, um, having a vision of what they're looking for in their life moving forward. And today I want to touch a topic that is um, very interesting to me because I'm seeing things being different than they've always been. Um, in the past, what we found during working with pretty much anybody who was going through depression and anxiety, normal, what we found was that depression was always started with anxiety. Anxiety always was a precursor to depression, usually. It, it, it went hand in hand, probably 98% of the time. One thing we're noticing is since COVID and lockdown, we've noticed that a lot of the um, not just my clients, but a lot of people, and especially teens, are now just having anxiety. They're having panic attacks without going into full depression. And we're not quite sure if that's going to be something that we're going to see later down the road, where a lot of people that are having just panic attacks and not leading into depression will eventually start to begin having a little bit of depression if they're not if they're not seeking help and going after going to look for help with somebody. Um, and it's the strange part about this is, and it's interesting because I got some data I want to read to you guys, is that the CDC, um, the Center for Disease Prevention, it showed that suicide deaths between 2019 and 2020 had decreased by 3% overall. Um, that was 2% by male and 8% by female. However, the suicide deaths for males in three age groups for 10 to 14 years and 15 to 24 years and 25 to 34 years, it increased. And the suicide deaths decreased among white Asian males, and death increased for Blacks, African Americans, Indians, and Alaskans, Natives, and Hispanic males. The odd part about that is that it's it seems to be the ones that were impacted the most by COVID, right? If you remember right, a lot of the uh, poor neighborhoods in Los Angeles, which is where I'm at. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm here in um, in Long Beach, California. And a lot of the poor neighborhoods were getting affected by COVID much, much quicker. We were seeing it spread much quicker, much faster, mainly because it seemed that there wasn't the healthcare, right? There wasn't the, 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 any of the social distancing. A lot of the stuff wasn't being adhered to by many, many people in those areas. Well, now we go back and look and we're now seeing that that increase is, is among those people of suicide rates. They don't know exactly what it was that had changed. They don't know what the overall report um, for the decline was and what the increase in society in the suicide rates caused to, to to make them increase in those those demographics um they believe that the, the pandemic played a huge part in this and if you put it all together i mean it's pretty clear that throughout the pandemic that the overall impact of the population's mental health was all affected right not just among teens um but it was significant among um younger generations up until say the 30s, 40s, and 50 year olds, because they were able to kind of cope a little bit more because they were in positions of having to cope. Kids were removed from school, they were sent home, they were put into lockdown. Things, the whole world changed. And we talk how social media had a little bit of platform to do with that as well, how it played its role. Um, Mental health has been significant. Um, that was written by Chris, by Christine Moulter. She's a medical doctor, chief medical officer of the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. Um, I want to give her credit for that. But the suicide rates are greatly impacted during the times of national tragedies, and they've seen that through through past events. Through 9-11, um, suicide rates increased quite a bit. They went up um, after the attacks in New York City, the death records showed there was no increase in suicide rates until afterwards. And that may be because there was a general sense among the population that they were all in this together, where with this, there wasn't really that interconnection. Um, that's something that Dr. Lagoya says was that they, 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 during that crisis, they didn't see this huge increase in suicide rates in any of the demographics of people. They believed that it was because we kind of felt like we were all Everybody was cohesive in the situation. Everybody was going to get through this, right? They knew there was going to be this, this, 
this outcome where they would come out of that 9-11 situation better and stronger as a country, as a world. And they, they just kind of, we had that internalized feeling and we kind of were guided towards that by media and everything else that was going on. And what I find interesting is that a lot of the clients, a lot of my kids that are coming to me um, are having the anxiety and not really discussing it with their parents. And it's really important that you as a parent is, you're, you gotta be open, but let them know. You gotta let them know that, you know, it's it's a mental health issue. They're common and 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 it's very treatable. Depression, anxiety is very, very treatable. It's been very treatable for many, many years, whether it's natural homeopathic remedies, whether it's having a mixture of both, whether it's just going into completely seeing a psychiatrist and getting prescribed. Um, the key is going to be that you are very open to your to your kids and you talk to them. So, you know, this is it's okay to feel this way. This is a feeling that pe many people are having, not just you. And we'll talk a little bit in a moment about what we think as therapists feel and what, other, what, what the country is seeing and what we're experiencing in the world that we think is kind of leading to this. I mean, it's interesting because you have to let these kids know that they are young, first of all. And that the brain is very, the brain is very malleable, and it's changeable. This the, the place they're in and the mindsets, the the processes that are happening in their head, aren't something that are are they don't have to be permanent. And there's tools out there that can assist them and help them in releasing some of the anxiety and releasing some of the stress and and what's been going on in their heads. Know that the we you know we used to always think a long time ago that you know social media was going to be what was going to cause people to go through more more depression, more anxiety, more more suicide, right? Because it was now, and then and, and some of it does add to it. I mean, I had a, a young client not too long ago that she was 14 years old. She was having very, very big body issues and, 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 and whether she was pretty or not pretty, feeling like she wasn't good enough. And, and that came from TikTok. And it was very specific because she had told me, you know, she's, since she got on TikTok during lockdown, she was noticing everybody noticing how beautiful these girls were and, you know, how they had this perfect lifestyle and how, you know, they had perfect families and they were doing things with their family and all this stuff, even during lockdown. So the interesting thing with that is that it's not, it's a mindset, right? And I think those of you who are older understand it's a mindset. What you believe is going to be what you, what you, what you draw to you. And if social media is pushing something to you like that, you're going to have the expectation that that's what you should be. This is who you should become. This is who you're supposed to be. You're not who you're supposed to be. And you're not meeting that, that expectation. Um, by the way, those of you who are watching over on, um, on um, YouTube, I see there's a couple in Facebook that have come in and popping in, popping out. I always get that on Facebook. But if you're watching this on Facebook or you're watching it on um, YouTube, click the link below. Just just open up another tab if you're on desktop and go over to uh, streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Click on that. That'll allow you to come into the room. It'll allow you to also ask questions if you'd like during this during this before I end this. Um, but social media has a big impact on, on depression and anxiety, um, mostly because what it does, it has this high expectation, right? You're not seeing people post about how horrible something is or how bad their life is or how something didn't work out the way we wanted it to. It's all, it's all a, um, a fairy tale story, and it always comes out really great at the end. Um, because they're not seeing their true, true, true images or true values of who they're living, who that person is, the life of style that person is really living. Um, and it creates this expectation in our kids. One thing I want to say is it's been really tough for these kids when lockdown happened. It's kind of imagine that you go to work nine to five every day. You come home, you cook dinner for your family, and then you 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 have the same routine. Well, lockdown affected us as adults in a way that we had to cope because now we had to have coping mechanisms, not just for the children, but not just for our, our families, but for our friends and everything else. We had to stay aware of everything, aware of what we were going to do, how we were going to cook our food, how we were going to bring our food in from outside, right? From the, from the grocery store even. Well, with them, what happened was it was like night and day. School shut down. They no longer had interaction with their friends. Now they're completely from home. And now the social media increased quite a bit. The, I can imagine what social media increased in watching views increased from, from the point of being not in lockdown to going into lockdown. Um, those numbers have got to be phenomenal. And I don't know if they'll ever give us those numbers or not. One thing we know is that when mental health starts to be affected, you got to look for signs, right? Um, 
And a lot of the kids are coping and they're going through these internal panic attacks and they're afraid to share those emotions with their parents or even with counselors at school right now, because the thing is that they, they feel like it's not right. Like it's not, it's not something they should be dealing with or they don't understand how to deal with it because they've never had that feeling before. They never had that sensation before. They never had so much inadequacies kept being put into their head. Um, so it's really important for you to have a communication with your kids. And one thing I'll tell you is it's, it's really tough. Um, if you, if you don't have a dialogue with your children as it is, it's real important to be able to start that dialogue. Have a seat. Just sit them down at the dinner table and just say, look, you know, we're here to talk to you. If there's something going on and, and you start seeing the signs, right, of them becoming really quiet, staying to themselves, maybe locking themselves in the room, not coming out. Um, now having the ability to get together with friends, but choosing not to, choosing to just stay at home and sleep on the couch. A lot of times when anxiety and depression starts to form, it just becomes this overwhelming sensation. And even with the adult patients, they just tend to want to sleep or they feel like they're just too exhausted to do anything. And there's functioning depression. Um, I'll tell you, I experienced that. Where you have the panic attack, you'll deal with the panic attack, but then the depression will, as long as you're busy, you won't have depression. As long as you continue moving around, you continue doing things, you continue going to work, you continue you know, keeping as busy as possible. So there's no this, this free moment, this slow down time in your life. You will, you, will, you will be able to manage it. The only thing is that there's a time when all of that stops. And you got to remember, the world's been changing every single day, right? It's just, I mean, even the adults were like, oh, my God, what's next, right? And what do they say? Don't, don't always be careful what you ask for. If you ask what's next, always be careful what you ask what's next. Well, the thing is, is that we have to put in our own understanding that these kids don't have that connection sometimes. Sometimes the parents are really busy. They're trying to make a living. They're not, they're not there. And that's where it's important that if you're listening to me and you're in, in your teen and you're in school, you're feeling these panic attacks or you're feeling that you're just kind of like really exhausted all the time. You're not, you can't motivate talk to your counselor, go in and talk to your counselor, talk to a teacher, a teacher that you like, a teacher that you feel comfortable with and just say, hey, look, this is what I'm feeling. Is it, can you help me with this? Tell me what's going on. And hopefully they'll be able to get you some assistance. And if it's getting worse and worse all the time and you start feeling like you're hopeless and there's no other way out, but suicide, do me a favor there. You just got to call the 1-800-SUICIDE hotline. Get on there and let them um let them talk talk to you. Let them under, help you understand that, yes, what you're going through is very common. Anybody out there who's listening to my, my words right now know that depression and anxiety is a very, very okay thing. And it's not, it's not going to be a life, life sentence for you. Um, even medication. I'll tell you my opinion on medication. I, have, I had just got through with a, a uh, parent that was telling me, you know, she didn't want to get her child vaccinated, so she chose not to do that. And that's okay as long as you're, you're educating your child as well, how to wash your hands, how to stay safe, you know, it's cleanliness, correct, and, and distancing. And uh, the child was having panic attacks for the last two years, and they did not, they were just hoping to go away. And I'm telling you, it, it doesn't go away. It gets worse many, many times. It'll just continue getting worse. So if you have a, a, a child that's going through these experiences, do something. I think it's so important to have either medication or or natural wholeness and wellness together with medication. East East has to meet West, right? When you meet in the middle, you get a perfect perfect road straight down the center, and it takes some time. So if your child is experiencing this now, I highly recommend that you please get them to to see somebody that can at least start a very low dose of medication. And cognitive therapy is going to be very very crucial. You have to continue to maintain cognitive therapy. What I mean with cognitive therapy is there's easy things you can do. You know, get your get your child to do something on the weekends. Take them maybe to Disneyland, or if you can't afford Disneyland, go for a long walk on the beach or go camping somewhere. Give them an out, give them an idea, an understanding. May let them invite a couple of their friends so they can start interbonding and mixing again. You gotta remember, I mean, you gotta remember what's going inside their head as well. Is it, you know, my gosh, I'm I'm out here with these friends, and these friends were never safe to begin with, and some were safe to begin with and still got COVID. So and some are still getting COVID. The idea is that you have to let your kids know that they are in a position where they have to make common sense. And we don't live in a world that is perfect, right? We are always in an unsafe world. The idea is that you teach your child, or you teach yourself even, because I have adults going through this as well. You teach yourself that you do the best of what you can to get through every situation that, that comes in your life, and you're never going to be 100% safe, right? You never are. We can't even cross the road. 
we can't cross a road without pushing the button on the stoplight. And even if the stoplight turns green and you wait for it to turn red to walk, you're kind of putting yourself in that situation. But you do the best you can to take the, the, the to make the decisions that are going to keep you safe and, and, and happy. And it can't be a constant drill in your mind as to what's happening with you or how you look or how you feel or, and it's very difficult for any of these young youths to live in that moment of time. We got a lot of pressures on them. I mean, you got pressures on them now that they need to make up grades because they didn't go to school for, for the entire time. They need to make up their grades. They need to start becoming better in their sports and their band and everything that they're trying to do that they used to enjoy is now becoming a job to them. So it's real important that you actually help them understand that 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 it's okay. You know, if you need to take a day off from 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 playing soccer tomorrow, it's okay. Take the day off and let's, as a family, do something. Let's go out, let's connect ourselves to mother nature. Or let's go for a hike or even just help me make something here at home. Help us make dinner. Let's do something together. Um, let your kids enjoy nature. And I'll tell you, it's, it's just walking for an adult. Going on the beach and just walking, or if you're living in an area that's rural, go out there and just walk walk along the woods and enjoy the beauty of everything. Look at look at life. Life has a lot to give us. Um, I know there's times that it's it doesn't seem like we are. Where is it going? Right? Is it is it falling apart? Is there any recovery from everything that's been going on? Um, is it ever going to stop? And the thing is, is that. It, it, we've always had things that happen in our country. We've always had wars. We've had many experiences. I mean, all the way from, you know, all the way since since humans have existed, there's been things going on that we, we didn't know how to deal with and didn't know how to understand. The good thing is that nowadays there's mental health, right? We have alternatives, um, alternative medicine. We have the ability to be able to talk to people. I hope, I mean, I hope that 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 people who are hearing this this um this vlog and this this live. I hope that you're not living in a century still where you feel like mental health is an illness and you can't talk about it because it's not. It, it is. I like to say it's a moment of, or a moment of time that passes in your life and you learn to cope or live, right? It'll teach you how to live and how to cope with with what's happening internally as long as you have therapy and you have the tools and use those tools. Um, Another thing you can do is, you know, let yourself come in. And if you're if you're a teen, come in and just, you know what, do something different. Don't just come home and go back to the couch. Go out and do something. Go out and, you know, change the patterns of your life. Biggest thing I notice that people go through when they're suffering from depression and anxiety is they, they become part of this. They live depression and anxiety to its fullest, right? Um they start fearing what their day is going to be like before they even start to approach their day because the mindset has been that every time they do something, it's it turns out wrong. It's it's never good enough or it's it's just a failure process, and it's important to know that 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 is not accurate and that's just you telling yourself what what your your how should I word that? It's you telling yourself that you are not good enough or that you're not meeting people's expectations. And damn it, forget about the people meeting people's expectations. When it comes to your mental health, you have to do what's right for you. So if you need to sit there and cry, cry. Cry and just let somebody hold you. Let your parents hold you. Let your friends hold you and and, and let it out. Let, let yourself express those sensations and those emotions because otherwise you keep holding them in thinking that mental health is a disease and that you should never share it because it's taboo, you're living in a century that we don't live in anymore. And on God, I hope that you're not living in that. And like I said, I'll leave you guys with this, is that if you ever, if you ever feel suicidal or you ever feel like there's just something you can't handle or you can't, can't manage on your own and just there's no other option, and you're an adult, I, 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 I hope my words hit you in the, in, your, in the moment that you're in right now as well. If you're an adult and you're feeling like the, you have no value or like your life is just not worth it or you don't, you don't mean anything to anybody, call. Call the suicide hotline. Call a friend. Call, call your parents. Call somebody who can sit and just talk to you and be honest. The key to mental health is to be honest. So many people do not share what's really happening to them. And that's one thing I'm really seeing with, with our kids today, with our youth, is that they just don't share what's happening to them. They they embed themselves in the phone. They embed themselves into social media. They embed themselves into text, into texting, into TikTok. And the problem with that is that there's no real external communication. It's all consumption, right? 
um, you know, play games with your kids. Start start running questions through. You know, how do you feel in the morning? When's your best time of the day? What what do you feel you accomplished? What what do you let's look back. Just like I would with an adult. Look back at your history, look back at your life. What have you accomplished? What have you done? What have you been good at? And what can you make better? There always has to be hope into the future. And it's real important that mindset wise is that you still have a way to be able to look down the road of path, down the path of life, right? Down the road. You've got to be able to look down into your future and know that there still is a future because I'll tell you, you will wake up and there'll be another day and you're going to have to decide what you're going to do. And I, I think that, you know, it's, it's, if you don't feel mentally well enough to get up and do something, you're going to, you're going to get yourself very stuck. Um, so I'm gonna leave you guys with this, and because I this is only a 30 minute show. If you guys like to hear more about this and maybe have an open discussion, a communication about your kids and what's happening, and maybe ways that we can come up with more ways to to assist them, more ways to reduce stress. Maybe we can even bring in a in one of our private channels. We can bring in a, a speaker that can help us as far as a psychiatrist or somebody can kind of give us an insight as to the mental awareness of what they need to know in order for that child to be able to evolve and change. Um, but Again, I will leave you with this at the very end, is that we're in a new century, a new time. Um, millennials, please know it's okay to feel depressed. It's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel that you know, you're, not, you're not accomplishing everything you should be. And you need a reflection to know that you are, that you are in the right place at the right time for what you're looking to do and what it is that you want out of your life. Don't let um, people kind of bring you down just because they don't know how to respond to you. Um, it's very important to allow for your for yourself to be able to grow past this and to know that if you got to be medicated, you, you do you do you do what has to be done for you. Um, if you're in a millennial, one thing I know is that you are exposed to a lot of social media, you're exposed to a lot of phone time as many adults are. I mean, I find myself running 16 hours a day sometimes because I'm posting or I'm looking at other stuff. I mean, I go into sometimes midnight looking at stuff, trying to find things. Um, I think we all do it. The problem with this is that, is that if you're having mental illness or you're having you know depression or you're having panic attacks, imagine scrolling through your through your Instagram and finding something that upsets you. I mean, how much more does that, how much does that impact you as a kid? I mean, you know, or you see your best friends on TikTok, they're all living these great lives. They're beautiful. They're happy. They're rich. They got all this stuff going on and you don't really know them. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of my, my kids are finding that social media is, they, they think that that's their true friends. Those are who they have become their friends. They interact with each other. They talk to each other. The person on the other side responds to questions and answers. It builds a relationship. And one thing that social media has done, it's allowed people to, God, people in my age, we didn't have exposure like that. So whether that's good or bad, our kids have tons of exposure. All of us as adults have tons of exposure. Some of that exposure isn't real. Some of that exposure is what they like to call fake news. Some of that exposure is what they like to call rumors. Some of the exposure, I mean, you know, how many times does it say Betty White had passed away before Betty White really did pass away? So keep that in the back of your mind and always, you know, know that if you're, if you're young, you're millennial or below, know that, you know, social media isn't always accurate. Ask questions. Don't take anything for granted and say, oh, that's exactly it. That must be true. Because a lot of times you're going to find that either it's true for that person or it's not true at all. Or maybe it's skewed information and the information isn't really as as bad or as great as it seems to be. But but don't don't let it get you down to the point where you're feeling anxiety and depression. And if you are at that point where you're having that, get help. Don't just sit and wait, because I'm gonna promise you it doesn't go away by itself. And I'll tell an adult that too. If you're suffering from depression and anxiety, it is not just gonna go away. You're not gonna wake up one morning and it's gone. It's like having diabetes. I had a client call me the other day who referred somebody to me and the client called, we did, a, we did a strategy call and that client is strong headed, quote unquote, and was knew that she knew that she could handle this on her own and she was attempting to do it and said that she's gonna change her life and, and she decided to just go ahead and keep doing what she's doing. But you know, when you have sugars that are 300, 400, 500 um, on the glucose level, on the A1C is at seven and eight, you, you got a problem. I mean, you cannot be so stubborn that you're gonna kill yourself, right? You're going to you're gonna have bodily injury to yourself because you're not taking care of a health issue. Mental health. That's why it's called mental health. It is 
something you need to be healthy in. Keep yourself well balanced. Keep yourself happy. Do things in your life that make you feel good. Pleasurable things. Enjoy things. If you used to do things that you're not doing anymore, incorporate them back into your life. Make make yourself the number one privilege of saying, make yourself the number one person and say, I have to do this for myself because I enjoy it. And I've, I've avoided it for a long time. So anyway, if you guys have any questions and you guys would want to talk a little bit more about this, like I said, DM me on this on this chat on this live um, YouTube. You can send me private messages and we'll we'll take this a little bit further. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for for tuning in with me today. And I look forward to seeing you guys. I'm trying to think what's going on now. So Monday, if you want Monday, join me. Um, on the live, we're gonna create, we're creating a room for this. So it no longer will be in this in this platform. But Monday morning, Monday afternoon at 3 p.m., we're doing a talk on small businesses and what they need in order to survive and to thrive during this this recession and depression that we're feeling. I guess I consider recession not really a depression, but as a business owner, it's pretty depressing when you're trying to struggle to bring income in and get people into your door. But if you're a new, new, new business or you're an old business and you've been seasoned for a long, long time, maybe you have 40 years in, in practice or in, in your storefront, join me um, next Monday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I'd love to have you as a discussion, as maybe even a panelist, because you know the, you know the drill. Been there, done it, you survived it. Um, like we have, I've been in business for 25 years, and I'll tell you, it gets tough times. It gets tough sometimes out there when you have nobody to, who can talk to who doesn't relate to you. So join me on uh, Monday, Monday afternoon, three p.m. Uh, it'll be on here for for now, and then um, we'll talk about. Um, I'm not sure what the topic is. I believe that my virtual assistant has that, and it'll be coming out soon. But you'll get it before the weekend. All right, guys, take care. Have a great have a great night. Have a good weekend. Go out there and do something special for somebody else other than yourself, and make yourself feel good. Bye-bye, you guys. Thanks. I think these videos are brilliant, and I'm sure you will like them too. Please like comment and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell.